Veronica. Other comments or questions? Hi, Ian Robert. Again, just um, to comment on Ginny's comment. Um, when you say it changes some of your operational um, aspects of your business, I thought part of the reason for the large number of spaces is because of the turnaround um, and children coming and going because of the large amount of classroom space. That seems to be, if your operation is going to be um, different now, you can have less turnaround. And do you need that amount of space for those? Plus, we all have the beginning of seven times. Well, that was one of the reasons that they said they needed some spaces. Mr. Shields? Pete Shields, Randall Road. Um, listening to the discussions here, uh, I'm wondering if there has been any subterranean uh, imaging of the area between the house and the barn. Because whenever you go around town and there's the house being built, they get some humongous rocks out all over the place. And uh, 163 years ago, they didn't have a whole lot of equipment to move them. So I would say that they probably shoved them behind the house or in an area between the two where they, it becomes impossible, not impossible, to blow them up or something. But they can't conveniently make this tunnel. So is there a contingency plan that you can't make a tunnel? Okay, I guess we'll, we've heard that. We'll put it aside for right now. We'll see if we can finish up a little bit here on the side of the side of the commission feel? Uh, I have a sense that um, this parking issue is going to overflow into CPDC. Um, and I think perhaps we could interact with CPDC to try to find a a better solution than what has been presented. Um, and I know the applicants have talked in the past about hearing us and hearing the public and trying to accommodate. And I think it's fair to say that um, this new plan is far superior to the previous one in that it does protect the historic house and buildings. And so I think they should receive some credit for that, but um, we have to do our due diligence as well, so I'm just um, bandstanding, I guess. I would like to read, this is a request, because it's a very important one. I'd like to read uh, paragraph uh, five under the second section of your rules and regulations, which it says the commission sh will make every effort to suggest ways in which an applicant can be amended, application can be amended, so that approval can be assured. So what we ask, uh, and it says that uh, time permitting, and we'll make the uh, commission will make itself available after each of its meetings with the formal review to uh, tell us what would be set, satisfy you so that, again, back to your original language, so that uh, approval can be assured. We don't want to be sent back and forth to the CPD, into the void, guessing what's on your mind because we can't do that. So uh, please tell us, and we still hope it's this application which we think meets every criteria, but please tell us before we leave tonight, if you're not gonna vote yes, what we have in front of you, uh, ways in which we can uh, be, have approval assured, quoting from your rules and regulations. Please abide by and give us that first. I think we've started to try and do that by questioning that there's two different types of areas out there, and uh, we're trying, but that's a very, it's as difficult for us as it is for you. I know that, but these are questions you're raising, but this says we need, we have the right to hear what you will do if you want to prove what we're having for you, right? And you still may do that, I understand. Yeah, and that's the important thing, that this commission has taken discuss the input that we've heard tonight. Um, so we're not going to be up to make recommendations quickly or anything. I had a further question getting back to was, uh, um, leaving the parking for a moment. Um, you talked about the reinforcing the uh, barn, 
foundation. And I'm wondering how um, you're lowering that by two feet, I understand. So how do you get a footing underneath in order to hold up the structure? Mr. Quigley, can you answer that? Well, we've been looking at the graph for a while now. <laughs> um, but, uh, but basically, I, I believe I explained it earlier, you would uh, basically is, is, is a segmented operation right. to, to build the footing underneath the existing footing. You build it in, small, in uh, alternating patterns. So you put a footing, you build little piers underneath the existing footings. Yeah, I, I understand the concept, but how are you lowering the uh, basement level by two feet to do that? Well, then, you, then at that point, after you've established that you Reestablish the foundation down to the uh, to a new subframe at a lower level. You can excavate out the material okay. and and pour a slab at a lower level. And where does all that excavated material go? It usually goes to uh, wherever excavated material goes. <laughs> off, 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 off site. We're on the lower floor. I guess I would ask uh, since we going off the subject to rest ourselves for a little bit here. Um, the tunnel, and I'll have to uh, pay for the uh, plan that has it, says the raised topography will go over the tunnel. It says that the sidewalk can put it. Again, I'd like to point out that that's a, it's a change in grade level. No, no. Jack, the tunnel is under, uh, we, we <coughs> dig underneath underground, we build a tunnel and cover it up. No, it says a raised topography. Jack, yeah, I'm just one thing sorry. In order to get the connection from the main house to the barn, with the tunnels connecting that, there's a low spot in the middle. And to order to uh, alleviate access over the tunnel, which will be a poured concrete walkway, in, in the center of that location is about a 16 inch grade change. And that's only to, and then it goes to zero at the barn, it goes to zero at the house. So if the worst case is 16 inches, you, you won't even notice that from somewhere out there from that distance. It, it, and, and this gets back to a little bit of remember it was saying earlier where, you know, there's berms, so we're going to be six or eight inches higher, there's differences. Well, right now, the existing topography can be rolling. When you put in a driveway, you have to have a certain grade <coughs> and CPDC is requiring that some type of berm system be put in because you need it with a drainage system, it would almost be impossible and really unrealistic to match a grade exactly. You have you have a rolling yes. driveway, okay? So I'm, just, I'm trying to get to that, but yet there, there would be about 16 inches at the worst case at the, at the center of, of where the tunnel is, there will be some coverage, but that's only to allow the ADA compliance between the two buildings or walkway in between the two buildings. But it's not a substantial grade change, I would do that as mine. Um, I'm, again, I'm worried about drainage because basically if you're going down that driveway, some of that water now probably goes behind the building. And if you start to grade up, it's going to have to go in a different direction. I'm not sure about that because I can't read these plans. This is not my job reading these plans. But it does say raised topography <coughs> for accessible path. Okay. And um, I, I don't know that you can see it. I guess that's not what I'm questioning as much. But what I'm looking at is seeing a bump. It's yeah. five feet wide. A bump with a five feet wide wall. Drainage would all be would not look natural. Okay. Yeah. It, it would, it, it's not that much runoff that would be running over to that side, but it, it would be and again, it's not a question about the tunnel at all. Okay. It's a question about <laughs> what it looks like. And I see raised the park and big things. I have concern because you can see that corner of the barn from somewhere. It won't impact the barn. Because we're, we're coming into grade at the barn, we're coming into grade at the house. It's in the center. There's a dip in the ground. But there. now, right now, about that much of that foundation is showing. You'll still see that. Not as we walk into ground level. It's got to be filled. Got to be not filled. at the foundation level. At the center of the, of where the tunnel's going, you'll be seeing fill. It's not going to impact the, the visual uh, of the bar. Does it hurt? Um, 
we still have um, lots of questions to answer. I don't know if we can move out of it any of those as 9.30. Um, how does the board want to deal with it? <coughs> I don't think we've discussed it at all. No. We've got two or three different options on you. We've got a bath parking lot. We've got a, what I can say is a driveway with a parking lot on the side because it has got paint on it and it's got some variation. Yeah. Um, so I think we can make a determination about where we want to move. I guess I'd like to see if there's any other questions that we need input on first. Um, any other questions that we need to have answered? repairs to the building, maintenance to the building, and we are assured that they're going to be done in kind. On this size of a project, that would fall under a certificate of non-applicability under maintenance. Okay? So the application there, in effect, I don't believe that the application is quite complete because it covers all of the pieces. Um, therefore, we would look at each of the projects and say, okay, these windows are going in. If it's windows, it doesn't go under non-applicability, it goes under appropriateness, okay? So therefore, if they're replacing cloudboard, we know where the cloudboard was, what it's gonna be replaced with, and that's our, if it was shingle, we'd do the same on the roof, if it were trim boards, we'd do that same, and it would fall under in kind under non-applicability. And basically, that would fall as a separate application. So I thought when they were putting them all together that, that non-applicability wasn't really covered because we didn't know what they were placing. They were just going to say, we're going to do it, we're going to do it, we're going to do it. No, we want to know what you're going to do and what you're going to do it with. And then we would, okay. The things that we singled out as uh, changing windows, for example, um, those five windows that are light windows and they're not used for feeding the horses, um, we would know what you're going to put in there and then we would give a certificate of appropriateness provided we Stuff that was appropriate. So that's a different ball. <coughs> so those would be addressed separately. That would all be addressed separately. Okay. Um, I also felt that there was some question because at the last meeting we had uh, in concerning the breezeway and the um, the shed in the back, we talked about the fact that there might be windows or doors changed there. Again, if they changed, that would fall under a certificate of appropriateness. That they'd have to come back to us, fill in, and we do discuss with you, approve whatever would happen. But they kind of had fallen in two big, two big categories at this particular point. Either the non-applicability um, or the certificate of appropriateness. We never covered them all into one big permission slip. Uh, I don't know that that's ever happened. 
So I, I don't know if that answers your question in total, because we don't know what all the pieces are yet. Because uh, I don't think the application has told us all the pieces. Okay? And that's my opinion. <coughs> so is that, am I right in that interpretation? Is that how it would work? Problems, but you just considered that, that might be considered a public way, so we would have to have those as a certificate of appropriate way. There are changes on the south side of the barn, which include at least five small light windows for the horses, probably, um, and the possibility of a door there. I don't know what's happening with steps that go up to that barn. Again, that would be a, something that's being replaced. Um, if it's a repair, you go into non-applicability, but if you're going to have some width to it, you use the door, in your case, maybe change the door. I think we may be, we may be we don't want to waste your time or ours. We've said in our submissions, because it's the truth, when we can't know, for example, if we go to, let's say, the house, and we're looking at the, the clapboards, we don't know now whether uh, the third row down may need three of them replaced. So we couldn't tell you, we can tell you that those will be replaced with like materials, man-made materials, same color, but we, can't, we cannot tell you, we cannot tell you where the exact same materials will be retained because we don't know the condition of them. So I'm not sure how we can no, but satisfy that. But if it's open enough, so we say, for example, we say on the west side of the house, which is the front of the house, right. you're going to replace rotten or damaged clapboard. That gives you pretty much the whole yeah, We've already said that. We, 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 we've said that. We've, no, we've said, we've said that we're going to repair and place every place where it's needed. The, there's, there's practically no location on these structures that don't need renovation. And you know they were making the small changes the doors and the windows, because we've been explicit about that. I, I think we've given you this information. Well, maybe the non-applicability you have, but the, certainly the ones that fall under the appropriateness have not been singled out. Changing all the windows? Well, we told you, we, we said that, but what, I mean, where's the confusion? That's what we're, we're missing something. Maybe I'm missing it, but I don't know that I've seen. I've heard that you're changing the windows on the right-hand side for the horses, but we haven't seen specifically why. Why don't you write your conditions in your order? No, 
There will be no changes from the <coughs> It will be mounted from the inside. for the public that we did receive from Criterion's attorney that we um, a list of orders uh, of conditions for a certificate of appropriateness plus um, the engineering um, what was that Mr. Michael? That package about the engineering um, <laughs> Uh, the most recent one. I mean, well, to um, the fact that you were presenting engineering uh, material that was really beyond our purview, but you were doing as courtesy. Yes, the reservation, the reservation, the reservation yes. that's right. So, I mean, the public should know that we have had additional input from you folks to try to reach a conclusion, but I don't think that. Commission has had enough chance to really <coughs> talk amongst ourselves to come to a conclusion. Or if we make a hasty decision, yeah, it may not be. In, in terms of the buildings, there's almost no reasonable condition we couldn't be. And obviously, if you would not allow us entry into the, the behind, that would be a problem for us. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, if you have condi conditions you want to place about the type of glass or that type of thing, or no change in exterior appearance of the holes in the line, you know, representing the monkey, but those conditions are not an issue. Oh, so I, 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 I comment at this point. Whether people agree or disagree on this project, this basic human condition called fairness. Mm -hmm. We have extended ourselves in every reasonable and professional manner with all men are courtesy. All we're asking is a transparent process. And if you have reasonable concerns or other particular material or otherwise, I think you know the money you put into this project and in the sense of fairness, you know that we will satisfy that requirement. So to try at this point, get caught up in the weeds and those individual point by points is either a strategy or you know, it's hard for us to take it at face value that it's not disingenuous. If I would, please, I have a silent only. I would only ask in a sense of fairness that if you <coughs> request that you specify them in writing so that we can satisfy them. We will satisfy them. We're not here to paint and switch. We make special provisions to engineers here, special provisions to make uh, have, uh, samples uh, specially shipped in time to this meeting. We are not cutting corners. I don't think by any stretch, any anyway, could reasonably suggest that we're cutting corners. I don't think anyone's implied that either. Well, the, the degree now that we're moving to is crossing the line on sincerity. So I would please ask that we find a way to get to the substance of the issue and be assured that we will satisfy their individual requirements on materials and conditions. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's just to make it so that it's what we've been doing. There's always been a separation between what is a non-applicability and what's appropriateness. When you're putting in different glass or windows, when you're putting in a new door in the back, when you're filling in a hole, that give us a list of procedure how you would like us to abide by and we will. Those things are under a certificate of appropriateness. We acknowledge that. Right. We know that. But we can't tell from this application. I can't. You can't tell where we're going to put in those, those doors and the windows? I can sit there and Hypothetically, set two doors and two windows? Well, first of all, my first question is, what's happening on the addition? We tentatively said that you might change those windows or not. I don't know if that's included. On the addition? We, we 
Would you, if you were sitting on this side, would you be offering up additional items when in fact you don't even know if you're, you're going to get your project through and you need to conserve your resources for other than you? Well, you shook your head at the last meeting and said, yes, those windows are pretty, the 70 windows. Are you're, a, you're asking us to do things beyond what we have to do and in, in conditions which we've already extended ourselves remarkably. I, I don't think you're going to gain anything by arguing back and forth. Mm -hmm. So let's um, decide whether we want to. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Larry McHugh, 205 Summer Avenue. Uh, next door to my home is the Unitarian Church. When they made the addition and wanted to increase the parking lot, it, it, their original plan showed that they were take the uh, landscaping out of the front of the Loring House and put nine parking spots in there. They started to talk to the people in the neighborhood and right away they said, we're very concerned what the people in the neighborhood think. And they eliminated that completely. And uh, what I'd like Mr. Littleton to consider, the people in this room, the people who live in the neighborhood, we all feel bad for your plan, but we'd like you to listen to us. We're not happy with it. The parking that we're talking about like that, we're talking about a street coming off Summer Avenue, which is going two ways on understanding that, plus parking on one side of the street. Now, there's no reason where you eliminated one of your buildings, there's two or three people mentioned here, you, you cannot, you do not need the same amount of parking space. I think the people here will look a little more favorably about you if you put all your parking in the back and only take the parking spaces that you need. Yeah. <coughs> would you be willing to do that? We're not going to make a representation of a from you. Right? And that's well, not in It's under our review. We, can't, we, can't, we have to go back to the CPDC. We have an approved parking plan. I'm not going to start negotiating the plan that they approved here because that's important. Have you submitted to CPDC yeah. at this point? No, we, we have to go. We are all set with them, but we would have to go back to them because you two are at the meeting. This was this was this was this was this was this was correct? Yes. Yes. We, we both yes. at that meeting. Yes. All right. So that, I think that's that important. That was not a CPDC meeting. That was a DRT. 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 Oh. oh. Yeah, we'll be going back to CPDC. But you haven't got a date set or anything. No. Not so I'm Is trying to get your application. I, I don't know yet if it's, if, if it's a minor or major change. I have to look at their regs again and their decision. We know we'll go back to them, and they will either consider it a minor change or major change. Uh, and we've had no issues with the CBDC. We work very well. We'll, have, we'll be back there. Can I get a clarification? Fine. Oh, 
August 20th at the top of page two, it says August 18th. So, uh, well, it was received August 24th, so there you go. That's the one. But there is, there are six items for which you are seeing, six categories of changes for which you are seeking a certificate of appropriateness. And everything else you are seeking a certificate of appropriateness. Well, everything else would be, to my mind, routine maintenance would be a Gotcha. The type of thing which, in, in past decisions, because I've read all of your yeah. decisions in 2011, you considered uh, giving. But then, yes, this list is, is explicit in, in what's reflected in Mr. Park Wallace's meeting. So is that sufficient for the board to understand that the August 20th letter actually is the list of the appropriateness? Yeah, look at the stack of papers. I'm, I'm happy that I can email, uh, Mr. Blog, I can email this to you again, or I can give you my copy right now. I have mine. Okay. The letter is dated August 20th. Is that what you want to see? Will I recognize? Well, I hope it's not more silly. It's the second page that has, has the list. And those are the only things that would be visible from anywhere and all from the Packer Middle School Drive. I'm pretty sure you received it. Oh, I got the one I printed it off on. Yeah, yeah. They were fairly explicit. Yeah, 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 they were fairly explicit. At one point, I had a guy on the <laughs> So I have no problem with sorting out the non-applicability from if we use that letter as the basis. Okay. Good. Um, that leaves us with. It's strange. We've never split a project before. Actually, we have split a project in terms of <coughs> West Street, not on Summer Island. We had somebody who wrote an application in, and first name was Kim, and I can't remember the last name. Um, the other ones that wanted the stairway change on the left of the house, the two front steps, and the fence in the backyard. Mm -hmm. They feel recent. They feel like recent. Yeah. The two sets of steps on the side were um, well, the two sets of steps would not be kind as so, non applicability. So you signed with other off. issues. Yeah. I signed those off with other issues. But then the uh, fence <coughs> inside the piece, we approved that night as an appropriate. Okay. I think that's, I think I'm stating it correctly. So we have to, the difficulty is this is so much more of a major, big, big, big project that it makes it. Well, there's a statement in that letter that's, that I have uh, lined out. It says, with its new application, Grantarian has heard and responded to all of the C uh, HTC's lawful concerns. <coughs> I don't know that we finished that totally by selling some problems there. It certainly separates the ones that are repair and maintenance versus appropriateness. Parking being an issue, or the parking lot, or the driveway, or what the heck, whatever you want to call it, I think is still a major issue. And this whole idea of the setting, um, which is all the way through our bylaw, is still an issue for us. And what I'm here. Um, so.
judgment. Uh, but it probably would be helpful to have some of the writing things from us. It also would be helpful to focus your, your deliberations. Right. And if we, I don't know, sort of work with CPDC or do what CPDC was going to do, I, I, I would certainly uh, will undertake to um, make sure it's the of input from CPDC with respect to what exactly.
a 14 day notice or anything. This is no, no, it's, it's just a continuation of so people know. Right, it's just a continuation. something like the uh, conference room if it's available in the town hall. The 20th is a bit more fair. Okay, we're now to the 21st. Then we said that can't happen. How about the uh, 22nd? Yeah, that can happen. Okay. Yeah. 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 22nd, we have one person who can't make it, but we have somebody that can step in and all. So the 22nd, does that work for you? Okay. Okay, so can we stay for the 22nd? Eric and I are not available on the 2nd of November. Uh, we're, 
we're running in in the time we need. The week of the 26th of October, any of those dates will be on the mic. My schedule is clear. Thank you. 